Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this lecture on equivalence relations and partitions. Uh, just to recap, in the last lecture we introduced the notion of equivalence relation and equivalence classes. Uh, in this lecture we will continue the discussion on equivalence relations and classes and uh, we will introduce uh, the notion of partition of a set and we will see the relationship between equivalence classes and partitions. So, let us start with the definition of a partition of a set. So, imagine you are given a set C which might be which may be finite or it may be infinite. Now, what is a partition of this set C? The partition here is basically a collection of pair wise disjoint non empty subsets say M subsets of C which should be pair wise disjoint such that if you take their union you should get back the original set C. So, intuitively for in, uh, say for example, you have the map of India you can say that the states the various states of India partition the entire country India into various uh, subsets such that there is no intersection among the states here. So, in that sense uh, I am just trying to find out uh, some subsets of the set C such that there should not be any overlap among those subsets and if I take the union of all those subsets I should get back the original set C. There should not be any element of C which is missing. So, more formally the requirements here is that uh, the more the requirements here are the following. Each subset C i should be non empty that means, each subset should have at least one element. They should be pair wise disjoint that means, if I take any i comma j then the intersection of the subset C i and subset C j should be empty. And if I take the union of these m subsets that should give me back the set C. So, one trivial partition of the set C is the set C itself right. I can imagine that C is partitioned into just one subset namely the entire set C or I can decide to partition C into exactly two halves or I can divide decide to partition C into three equal sets of equal sizes and so on right. So, there might be various ways of or the of partitioning your set there is not a unique way of partitioning a set. Of course, how many ways you can partition a set that is a very interesting question we will come back to that question later. What we now want to establish here is a very interesting relationship between the equivalence uh, from an equivalence relation to the partition of a set right. So, we want to establish uh, a relationship between equivalence relation and partition of a set. So, imagine you are given a set C consisting of n elements. Now, what I can prove here is that if R is an equivalence relation over the set C and if the equivalence classes which I can form with respect to the relation R are C 1 to C m, then my claim here is that the equivalence classes C 1, C 2, C m constitutes a partition of the set C. Okay. So, just to recall the definition of partition demands me to prove three properties. The first one of the, the first property is that each of this subset should be non-empty and that is trivial because I know that each of this equivalence classes is non empty because it is bound each of the each of these equivalence classes is bound to have at least one element namely the equivalence class of C i will definitely have the element i because since my relation R is an equivalence relation it will be a reflexive relation that means the element i will be related to itself. So, the element i will always be present in the equivalence class C i that means, none of this equivalence classes will be an empty set. So, the first requirement is satisfied. The second requirement from the partition is that the union of the various subsets should give me back the original set. So, my claim here is that if I take the union of all this m equivalence classes I will definitely get back my original set C. And this is because you take any element i from the set C, it is bound to be present in at least one equivalence class. Specifically, the element i is always present in the equivalence class of i itself, namely the equivalence class C i. So, that means 
I can safely say that if I take the union of these m equivalence classes, I will not be losing any element of the set C. Okay. And the third requirement from the partition was that the various subsets in the partition should be pairwise disjoint. So, in this specific case I have to show that you take any two equivalence classes they should be pairwise disjoint. And that is easy because in the last lecture we proved that two equivalence classes are either same or they are disjoint. You cannot have a common element present in two different equivalence classes which automatically establishes that uh, these subsets are pairwise disjoint. So, we have proved here that you give me any equivalence relation and if I take the equivalence class equivalence classes that I can form with respect to that relation R that collection of equivalence classes will constitute a partition of my original set. Now, I can prove the property in the reverse direction as well. What do I mean by that? I claim here that you give me any partition of a set C. Say you give me a collection of M subsets which constitute a partition of the set C, then I can give you an equivalence relation R whose equivalence classes will be the subsets which you have given me in the partition. Okay. So, I will give you the construction of the equivalence relation and the construction of the equivalence relation here is very straightforward. So, the required equivalence relation is the following. You take any subset from the given partition say the subset C k and here k ranges from 1 to m because you are given m such subsets in your partition. So, with respect to each subset C k what I am going to do is I take the element i and I take the element j which are present in the subset C k and I add the ordered pair i comma j in my relation R. Right. So, I stress here that there is no special requirements from my i and j. I am looping over all possible i comma j present in the subset C k. So, my i can be same as j, my i can be different from j and so on. For every i comma j present in my subset C k, I have to add the ordered pair i comma j in my relation R and if I do this for every subset C k in my given partition, then my claim is that the resultant relation R will be an equivalence relation and its equivalence classes will be the subsets C 1 to C m. So, just to demonstrate my point, imagine my set C is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and a partition of this set is given to you. So, I am given 3 subsets, Sub first subset has 1, 2, 3, the second subset has 4, 5 and the third subset has 6. Let me construct a relation R as follows. So, I take the first subset here and by iterating over all i comma j present in this subset, I add ordered pairs of the form i comma j. So, I add 1, 1, I add 2, 2, 3, 3, 1, 2, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, 2, 3, 3, 2. Okay. So, these are the ordered pairs which I have added with respect to the first subset. I take the next subset 4, 5 and with respect to the second subset 4, 5, I add the ordered pairs 4, 4, 5, 5, 4, 5 and 5, 4. So, these are the subset, these are the ordered pairs which I am adding now with respect to the second subset. And with respect to the third subset, you might be wondering there is no j present in the third subset. That is why I said there is no restriction that I should be same. I should be different from j or I should be same as j also. So, I have to iterate over all possible i comma j present in the subset. So, in this subset if I substitute i equal to 6 and j equal to 6, I have to add the ordered pair 6 comma 6 in my relation R. And now you can check here that the relation R that I have constructed is indeed an equivalence relation. It satisfies the reflexive property, satis it satisfies the symmetric property and it is transitive as well. And if you form the equivalence classes of this relation R, you will get 
the subset C1, subset C2 and you will get the subset C sorry you will get these three subsets C1, C2, C3. Okay. So, let us formally prove this we formally now going to prove that the relation R that I am saying here to construct indeed will be reflexive, symmetric and transitive. So, let us prove that this relation R will be reflexive. So, <coughs> you take any element I from the set C I have to show that I comma I is present in the relation R to show that it is reflexive. Now, since C1 to Cm is a partition of the set C, the element I will be present in one of the subsets in this collection. Say it is present in the collection, it, it is present in the subset Ck. Now, if it is present in the subset Ck, when I was up, when I am applying this rule to construct this relation R, I will see that element I is present in Ck and I will add the ordered pair i comma i in the relation r as per this rule. So, that shows that you take any element i from the set C it is bound that I have the or it is I ha it is bounded uh, if it is it is guaranteed that I have the ordered pair i comma i present in my relation r that proves that the relation r is reflexive. Now, let us prove that the relation r that we have constructed here is symmetric as well. And for proving that I have to show the following, I have to show that if you take an any arbitrary ordered pair i comma j present in the relation R, then you also have the ordered pair j comma i all present in the relation R. And how do I prove that? So, the first thing to observe here is that if at all you have the ordered pair i comma j present in the relation R, that is possible only because of the following you have one subset say C k and both i and j are present in that subset. Then only you would have added the ordered pair i comma j in the relation R and none of these two elements i and j could be present in any other subset in this partition right in the given partition or in the given collection of subsets because that is the definition of a partition. So, since i and j are present in C k by applying the rule that I have followed for constructing the relation R, I would have also added the element j comma i because I have to iterate over all possible i j. So, when i becomes j and j becomes i as a result I get j comma i being also included in the relation R and that proves that my relation R is symmetric. Now, let us prove that the relation R is transitive and for proving that my relation R is transitive let me take an arbitrary pair of uh, arbitrary ordered pairs. So, I, I take the ordered pairs i j and j k present in the relation R and I have to show that the ordered pair i k is also present in the relation R. So, the first thing to observe is that since by construction of my relation R if at all i j and j k are added to the relation R that is because all the elements i j k were present in a common subset namely say subset C L because it cannot happen that you have i j present in say C k and you have or you say, say i j present in C 1 and k present in C 2 that is not possible here. right? because if that would have been the case then you would have added the ordered pair i j and j i in the relation, but you would have not added the ordered pair i k or j k in your relation. You would have added the ordered pair i j or j k in the relation only when all the three elements i j k are present in the same subset say C l. Right? Now, since you would have iterated over all possible i j present in the subset C l you would have iterated over k as well and you would have added the ordered pair i comma k in the relation R as well and that shows that your relation R is transitive. Okay. So, that shows a very nice relationship a nice property between the equivalence classes and the partition. You give me any equivalence relation 
the corresponding equivalence classes will constitute a partition. You give me a partition of a set, I will give you an equivalence relation corresponding to uh, those partition. Namely, the equivalence relation will be such that its equivalence classes will give you the same subsets which are given in the partition that you given to me. Okay. So, in other words, what we can show here is that the number of uh, equivalence relations what we have established here actually is that the number of equivalence relations over C is exactly the same as number of partitions of set C. Because we have established that you give me any equivalence relation that corresponds to a partition, you give me any partition that corresponds to an equivalence relation. So, the counting the number of equivalence relations in essence is same as counting the number of partitions of the set C. Okay. So, that brings me to the end of this lecture. Uh, just to summarize in this lecture, we introduced the notion of partition of a set and we established formally the relationship between an equivalence relation its equivalence classes and the partition of a set. Thank you.